day, Jason from Better Batteries. Thanks for all your questions and emails. We got quite a lot after part one of our DC to DC uh, video we put up. We've had a lot of questions come back. So today I just wanted to, uh, to, to make a couple of quick vids just to answer some of those. Uh, one of the questions we got is at this 90 degrees, our, our cases are, are UL um, rated cases, so they're ABS plastic uh, V2 rated case, which is rated to 90 degrees. So um, one of the questions was how soft does the plastic get? So as I say, this has been charging now pretty much all day. Um, it's at 90 degrees inside there, which is the rating of the plastic. So with the swelling in the case, at first I would thought that they'd be very tactile, very soft, very malleable. So if we open it up, and I have a look, and I, and I do this, sorry it's very hot, but that is really firm. So there is no, there's no flexing or the case hasn't gone soft, it's just literally the pressure inside that battery is, is so great. What happens is the little rubber caps that are meant to, to release the vent, above about that 70 degree mark, they sort of, the rubber and the plastic becomes tacky and then the caps grab onto each other so they don't release and, uh, and therefore the pressure builds up inside the battery. When I say pressure, it's just steam being created by the bit of moisture inside the battery you're converting that heat and it just gets into steam and that that is the pressure that expands the case. So as you can see, uh, the cases, are, they look ugly, that battery's still functioning fine, even with quite a, a predominant bow in the end of the battery. But uh, so there you go, that's, that's, that's uh, the first question as, as to the, the case. The One of the other common questions we got was how would you overcome this? How what what would you do to make a bad situation better? And it's a very good question. Probably, probably the first thing you could do is to increase the size of your DC to DC charger. You've got to remember that we've got two fridges running on this, so we've got quite a large load of around about that 15, 16 amps or 14 amps. So the DC to DC in a hot environment has derated, so it can't keep up with the load and charging of the battery. So increasing the size of the DC, DC maybe to a 40, would provide more than enough current to charge the battery and power the load and overcome the charging circle of doom, I suppose you could call it, where the poor charger just can't charge that battery quick enough. Again, this has been charging all day and we're just approaching 12 volts. Um, so it just can't put enough current into the battery. So that would be the other thing. The other thing, obviously, I'd be stating the obvious when I said remove the DC to DC charger from the environment, put it in a cooler environment. We noticed that at around about 80 degrees, uh, some of the units with LED lights, the LED stopped blinking. This at 90 degrees, there's no LED showing on the unit at all, even though it's still in various stages of charge, because at 90 degrees, the poor LED, it just can't function. It's such a hot environment for the electronics internally in that unit, that it's under immense pressure. So removing that from the environment and ultimately take the battery out and put it in the back or, or even on the back, you know, securely somewhere in the tray or somewhere, but remove it from that hot environment. It's just hell for batteries. I often say to people, you wouldn't put a battery in an oven, turn it to 90 degrees and then put a 25 amp charger on. Who would do that? But yeah, we seem to be happy to do that a lot of days of the week in our, in our DC to DC charging. Amazing what man will do for cold food and beer. So uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, that's uh, a couple of the common questions, and keep them coming. Thank you.